means a lot to me. I pray that God will touch you and put his hand upon you and meet all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Because God loves you. God has chosen you. God has a plan for your life. Every time I share, I talk about the end of time. Some people call me a shock teacher. Why do I do that? May I share with you why I do it? Because I'm like a voice crying out to the wilderness of nations. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Before I was born, people from Azusa Street Revival prophesied over my mother and say, you're going to give birth to a male baby. Call his name Robert because he will be a prophet to the nations and prepare the nations of the world for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I was at 18, I said, Lord, how do I know those people, what they said was true? Send somebody. We have never heard of my name or hear about what happened when I was born. Let them come and prophesy to me everything those people prophesied over my mother. And in two weeks, Henry Portugita, a Dutchman, came and he prophesied everything. He said, when you, before you were born, the group of people of God from the Azusa Street prophesied over you that you'll be a prophet to the nations. And you said, God, send somebody else to confirm that that's, this is what you called me to do. And he says, I've come to confirm it. He confirmed every word. There was wonderful people of God had prophesied over me. And the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For this purpose I was born, that I may speak on the things pertaining the end of time, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is what God has put on my heart to prepare my nation and my generation for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many say, well, why don't you speak of other, on other things? I cannot speak on anything except what God tells me. And this is what he called me to do. This is why I must be faithful. And this is why I say to you, listen to what God is saying through me. When I was in, in Europe, I prophesied about the war coming to Ukraine in three years. I was in, in Russia. I spoke to pastors from 10 time zones in Moscow at the convention center, in Kaliningrad, Volgograd today. I talked about the war that was coming three, in three years, exactly precisely about how America and Russia will be engaged in that war in Ukraine. I shared that. When I was in Asia, I shared the same thing. When I was in South Africa, I've gone around the world to share these things because this is what God has called me, to be a messenger to my generation to prepare them for the coming of the Lord. People ask me, well, how do you get interpretation of these scriptures? How do you know this applies to this particular situation in our present time? Because the Bible was written thousands of years ago. How do you know to apply a specific scripture to a specific situation and interpret it and say, this is that? That is the spirit of prophecy that God has put upon me. Because the spirit of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That's what God has called me. He's called me to prophesy to my generation, to prepare my generation for the coming of our Lord and Savior. That's why I plead with you to listen to the things that God has given me to give to you because you are the object of God's love. You are loved, you are accepted, and God has a plan for your life in these last days. These are not days to give up, to run and hide. These are the days to be about the Father's business, the business of the kingdom. These events that are taking place are fulfillments of biblical prophecy. Every word in the Bible 
every prediction will come to pass. And we are now in the days of the acceleration of the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. You do well to listen carefully to what the Spirit of God is saying right now. Because I'm going to speak to you about the impending war between Israel and Iran. Is it in the Bible? If it is, where is it in Scripture? What are the, what are, what's going to happen? Will Israel be defeated? Will Israel survive this conflict with Iran? The answer is Israel will survive. Will they be casualties, major casualties? As I said at the conference, at the Jerusalem prayer conference in Houston, to an international audience, I told them that the Lord has spoken to me that there will be a major attack on the city of Tel Aviv, that all of God's people all over the world must pray God's covering for Tel Aviv. Yes, the people all over the world pray for Jerusalem, but I plead with you to extend your prayers towards Tel Aviv. You say, how do you know there's going to be an attack in Tel Aviv? Because God told me. God still speaks. Everything he says comes to pass. He has given me prophetic words that have come to pass. Everything that the Lord has told me has come to pass. Whether it's the heads of nations, it has come to pass. And I know this also will come to pass. That's why I am pleading with all of God's people all over the world to fast and pray, to extend a, the grace of God over the city, over the nation, the conflicts that are coming, the war that's coming, which I'm going to discuss, which I'm going to go deeper into the scriptures, into the revelation that God has given me, into the timing of this conflict that's coming, the result of the conflict that's coming, so that you will know that our God reigns. That our God is in total control of everything that's happening. Nothing happens by chance. We're living in a prophetic time. We're living in a time of visitation. We're living in a time in which you need to know the plan and purpose of God. Because your protection and provision is in the center of God's will. That's why the scripture tells us in the book of Luke chapter 21, verse 9 to 11, concerning the days and the times we're living in. It says, but when you hear of wars and rumors of wars that we are listening to right now, to the news every day about the conflicts in Ukraine, the involvement of NATO, the involvement of America, the involvement of Russia, and the, 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 the potential the possibility of it going nuclear, it's there. Every day we live in the uncertainty of what might happen as a result of this conflict. There is a conflict brewing between Taiwan and China and our engagement in the Indo-Asia Pacific realm. It's, it's happening. There could be another conflict there. There is a conflict that's going to brew up in the Middle East. We're living in a time of tremendous tension and uncertainty. Everything that's shakable is being shaken right now because we're living in a prophetic time. A time in which every child of God needs to know what God says pertaining to the events that are before us. It says, when you hear these things, do not be terrified. People say, you are a shock teacher. You terrify people. You should not be terrified. For these things must come to pass first, but the end is, is yet to come. The end is still in the future. It will not come immediately because we are to prepare the people for their immediate future. When you hear these things, don't be terrified. They are signs of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Something bigger is going to happen. Something bigger than the the, the, the war in Ukraine, bigger than the conflict in, in Taiwan and, and China and, and, and the Middle East. Something bigger is coming. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the end of time. 
That is what's before us. And these are the signs of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is why it is extremely important to follow what Scripture says. It says, don't be terrified. Don't give up. Don't run. Because there's no place to run except to run to the Lord. So don't be anxious. Be anxious for nothing in everything but prayer and supplication. Let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will fill your heart. Don't be terrified. Yes, we are living in perilous times. The end of the world. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are the generation that will say, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. The most blessed generation over this side of heaven. Why should we be terrified of the coming of our Lord and Savior? These are just signs of the coming of our Lord and Savior. Then he said to them, Nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Are we seeing that happening? It's happening. You just have to watch the news, social media, everywhere you look. It's all about wars, ethnic cleansing. It's all about the East versus the West. It's all about instability, political instability, financial instability. It's all about the, the, the social insta instability. All the conflicts that are taking place all over the world. Economic Problems, major financial problems, major meltdown of corporations and banks. They're here. We're, we're watching all this. We're watching the, we're moving towards uh, bank holidays and a, a tremendous financial meltdown. It's coming. What will happen with your life, with your family? What's the solution? Are there solutions? Yes, there is a solution. Jesus is the answer. He's the answer to your financial situation. He's the answer to your political situation. He's the answer to the totality of human existence. Because he is the answer. You go to him and he has personal answers to your situation. Whether it's physical, sickness and disease, whether it's financial, he has a personalized answer to your situation. He knows you by name. He even knows the number of the hair on your head. That's how intimate he knows you. And he cares for you. And he has a wonderful plan to lead you out of the crisis you're in. Because Christ is in the crisis that you're in. And the crisis that we are facing is a nation. Christ is the answer. The question that is so important at this time is, will there be a war between Israel and Iran? Is it in the scripture? Can we find it in scripture? Can we know what will be the outcome of that war? Yes, we can. It is in scripture. We can find out these things because God wants us to know these things. He has given us in his word the answers to all of human history. History is his story. History is about God who is in control. And he wants you to let go and let God have his way to be in control of your life. Not only is he in control of the universe, of the affairs of men, of the time and season we're living in. He just wants you to yield to him because these things can frighten you. These things can be disturbing, perplexing. But they shouldn't be. These things should just tell you they're going to happen. God said they're going to happen, but nothing is going to happen to you because you're under the shadow of the Almighty. Because God loves you too much to let you come into conflict and into danger. He will shield you and protect you. Put your trust in Him. He'll take care of all the financial shortages that you're facing and the food shortages that you're facing. He's, he's going to take care of you in the conflicts, global conflicts, in nuclear warfare that's coming. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you, and he will not fail you. This is the good news that our God reigns and that he is in charge. And he told us there will be a conflict between Israel and Iran. It is in scripture. I'm going to walk you through, and I'm going to show you, to show you that nothing is happening, that God has not already told us, that everything is in scripture, and that we can know the future, because our God is in control of the future. That's why we know our God is the living God, that our God is the only God. Christ is the Lord of history. 
He has revealed to us the future. Where is the, the, the Iran conflict? Can we find it in scripture? Can you show us? I'll take you to Daniel. He was given the timeline and he was also given the events that will take place until the end of time. In Daniel, we'll find all the, the, the major historical events that have happened in the last 2,500 years. Because Daniel was given the timeline 2,500 years ago. And we know from then the events, the profiles of every player is given in scripture, was given to Daniel by Gabriel. That's why we know the events of tomorrow, the headlines of tomorrow, because they've already been written in scripture. In the book of Daniel, this is Gabriel speaking to Daniel. Do not be afraid. You are highly esteemed, loved. When God says that, that's a place of being blessed. That's the place where you want to be. The place where Daniel was. Daniel was like everybody. Ordinary person. Doing extraordinary things by the anointing. Having visitations from heaven. And this is a visitation from Gabriel. It says, you are highly esteemed by God. Peace. Be strong now. Be strong. What a glorious encounter. Peace be unto you. God speaks peace to us. An encounter with God brings peace. In his presence is fullness of joy, pleasures forevermore. Daniel, don't be troubled. Peace be unto you. Be strong. When he had spoken to me, I was strengthened and said, Speak, my Lord, since you have given me strength. Revelation gives strength. Revelation gives guidance. There is an impartation when you have a visitation from God. He is having a visitation from God and strength is being given to him because he, God knows our weaknesses. He meets us in our weaknesses and he speaks to us in our weaknesses and he strengthens us and transforms us and conforms us to his image. So he said, do you know why I've come to you? He's asking a question, and he knows Daniel does not have an answer. He doesn't know. He, he didn't even know the, the angel Gabriel was coming. So he, he's asking him a question, and before Daniel could answer, he goes ahead and tells Daniel why he came. Isn't that amazing how God would encounter ordinary people at our level and speak to us things we can understand? That's why I'm sharing these things, because we can understand the conflict between Israel and Iran, which is impending, which is coming soon, very soon. We know why it's coming very soon. We know what will be the outcome of it, because it's all given to us in Scripture. And we know who is going to be on the side of Israel, who is going to be on the side of, of Iran. We know all the details of the future. Prophetic intelligence gives us understanding of these things. Soon I will return to fight against the prince of Persia. That is Iran. Persia. Underline that. Persia. It says, I will return and fight against the prince of Persia. Gabriel was going to fight against the prince of Persia. That has to do with the current situation going on right now between Persia and Israel. Because Iran's name is Persia, as we will find, as we find, as we go through this message, because this message has a lot to do with the current situation, the current crisis in Persia between Israel and Persia. I'll return to fight against Prince of Persia, and when I go, the Prince of Greece will come. The Prince of Greece will come. That will come to the aid of. Israel. We'll talk about that. This is a historical event. We'll show you when it happened and we'll show you how it is a paradigm of the things that are about to happen. How it is laying a foundation, a blueprint of what's coming, what's going to happen. Now we're given the historical prophetic foundation that the angel Gabriel was going to stop the prince of Persia. And now he's going to let the prince of Greece 
come. But first, I tell you what is written in the, in the book of truth. No one supports me again as, except Michael, your, your prince, or Michael, the angel that stands on your side, fights for Israel. Now, he's talking things that are bigger than uh, our understanding. He's talking about things bigger than this planet. He's talking about now the cosmic factors that impact this world. He's now talking about the, the Prince of Persia. Who is the Prince of Persia? Who is the Prince of Greece? Who are these people? Where are these people? These are the fallen counsel of God, the sons of God. God created this universe and he put watchers, these were appointed by God to watch over Adam and his seed. They were given jurisdiction over the planet by God. Now, Lucifer, he was in charge, in control of these principalities or princes who were given territory. They were territorial lords over territory on this planet to watch over the children of, of Adam and to help them. Of course, you know that the devil did not want to do that. He deceived men and took away the power and the dominion that was given to, to Adam and Eve. So then, these principalities that are in the heavens, who were given jurisdiction on the earth, the fallen sons of God, the counsel of God that rebelled against God with Lucifer, who were given original jurisdiction to watch over territories on the planet. Now, he is talking about the prince of Persia, that is a principality in the heavens. He is talking about the prince of Greece, a principality in the heavens. And we know there is Gog, who is the principality over Russia. We know there is a dragon, who is a principality over China. These are mighty principalities. But we, as the redeemed of the Lord, he has given us all power over all the powers of Satan over all principalities and powers of darkness. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. There is a hierarchy that is in the heavens that wants to control the earth, subject the earth to their will. And Jesus came to break the power of Satan and to give back to the sons of men the authority and the dominion that we lost in Adam. In Christ Jesus, the second Adam, we regained the image of God and the authority of God. And the dominion that we lost was given back to us against these principalities and powers and rulers of darkness that rule the universe. Yes, the universe is full of principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. People talk about aliens. Yes, they are aliens, which is fallen angels. Are they aliens real? Yes. Do they influence this planet? Yes. Did they have children with, with the daughters of men? Genesis chapter 6? Yes. So these are real principalities, rulers that rule the earth because we sinned against God. And we gave them the authority. But for the born again, born again, we came out of Satan's control, Satan's dominion, and we are now in Christ Jesus. We now have re restored. We now have the authority. We now have the dominion. We now can rule over these principalities because they are running our world. That's why the devil said to Jesus, Kneel down, and I'll give you the kingdoms of this world. He has principalities and powers and rulers ruling the world. And Jesus said, no, I'm going to fight you. I'm going to take it back and give it to, to the seed of Adam. And he was crucified, rose again. After he conquered the devil, he gave us back the authority as born again men and women of God over these principalities and powers and rulers of darkness that rule the earth. So here we have Gabriel going back to fight the Prince of Persia to pull him outside 
and let the prince of Greece come because the assignment belongs to the prince of Greece. This is what happened in history. The prince of Persia, which is Iran, was removed and the prince of Greece was released. Now that historical paradigm, that historical blueprint is being replayed today with Israel, with Iran. We shall look at that. That's where I'm going. That's where I'm taking you. I'm going to lay a foundation to show you how the prince of Persia is trying to come back again as the prince of Greece, which is Western influence, Western control over Israel, and try to remove that and take it over from a historical perspective and current perspective. We are moving now into the realm of the prophetic and the ancient players, the principalities in the heavens, are moving to fulfill their plan. What is God's plan? And I'm going to walk you through the first paradigm, which is the example of the Prince of Persia versus the Prince of Greece, and how the Prince of Persia and the Prince of Greece are going to again have a confrontation in Israel at this time. In order to give you a foundation, I'm going to give you a timeline. In 600 BC, Nebuchadnezzar began the process of taking over Israel. And when he defeated Israel, the children of Israel were taken in exile. And they were in exile for 70 years because of their rebellion. And during that 70 years, God raised up Cyrus. And Cyrus was raised by God, prophesied, Isaiah prophesied of, of his coming. And he sent the children of Israel free to return back home, to rebuild Jerusalem, to rebuild the temple. And that was done by a Persian king, Cyrus. Now, Cyrus being used by God to restore the Jewish people back home, the, this is the prince of Persia, the king of Persia, Cyrus, God using Cyrus to accomplish his purposes. God is going to use political figures. God's going to use military powers to, con to accomplish his purposes. God is not limited to the church, to the good people. The world belongs to him. He is in control of the world. He will raise leaders on the earth that will accomplish his plan and purpose. And we see that in Cyrus. God raised him up to accomplish his plan and his purpose. After Cyrus restored the Jews back home and commanded them to rebuild the temple of God. Then those Jews that remained in the country, after Cyrus in 539 B.C., Medo-Persia defeated Babylon. And Babylon was replaced by Persians. It became Medo-Persia. That's how Babylon and Persia becomes one. They are in the same area of Mesopotamia. So here we are in Mesopotamia. Babylon is replaced by Medo-Persia. And now Medo-Persia in 538, Cyrus made a decree to restore the Jewish people back home. We are following a biblical prophetic timeline. Purposes that were declared by God. There will be a Cyrus. He will restore the children of Israel back home. That happened. 538 B.C. Cyrus makes a decree. Artaxerxes in 453 made the final command for the people to go ahead and finish building the temple and finish building the wall. All these things were predicted, were given to Daniel to know the timeline to the end of time. And in 531, the prince of Greece came, Alexander the Great, defeated the Persians. So that scripture may be fulfilled. We see the biblical timeline. We see the fulfillment of what God said. Because everything follows the biblical timeline. 
And that timeline has been given to us, revealed to us by our loving Father. And that's why he sent me to you to give you insights, understanding of what's happening with Israel and Iran or Persia. Persia, its original name. In um, jumping to 1935, Persia changed its name to Iran. So Iran is Persia. In 1935, they changed the name. And in 1950, after Israel was born, rebirth, the rebirth of Israel, in 1948, a miracle of biblical proportion, since the resurrection of Jesus Christ, this was the greatest miracle of a people gathered back in their land after nearly 2,000 years. Only God can do that. He says, I'll gather you back from the nations. In 1948, Israel was gathered back as a nation in Israel, in the ancient land, to fulfill biblical prophecy. Our God is an awesome God. To God be the glory. He has never failed any of his promises. So Persia became a friend of Israel and opened the embassy in Jerusalem, in Israel. And in 1979, Ayatollah Khomeini overthrew the Shah of Iran. And in 1980, two things had happened. In 1979, Ayatollah Khomeini, you remember about the, the hostages that were held by, by the Iranian revolution. And in 1979, the Ayatollah Khomeini changed the name of the country to the Islamic Republic of Iran. And in 1980, he started sponsoring his Abula. He started his war against Israel. He called back the ambassador and closed the embassy with Israel, became an enemy of Israel, and the Shah, as you know, was thrown out. Some of you remember that. Now, we now have an Islamic Republic of Iran, which was committed to fighting immediately, fighting Israel. In 1882, it founded the Hezbollah. A proxy war began between Israel and Iran. This is the foundation of the conflict that we're watching. This is so important to know that this war has been going on. Now, in 1987, the Iranians were able to get the centrifuge technology from a Pakistan scientist to create a Shiite nuclear bomb to destroy Israel. And they're working on it ever since then. Why? Because they are deadly enemies of Israel. Now the question is, they don't have territorial conflict. Because Israel and Iran, they, it's a thousand miles between Tel Aviv and Tehran. One thousand miles. So they don't have territorial issues. They don't have the Palestinian issue because they are not Arabs. They are Persians. So they have no, there is no common reason. There is no really any intelligent reason, as we will show you the root of this conflict. What is this conflict? What is this conflict going to lead to? Why is it being, why is it that the Islamic fundamentalist mullahs in Iran wants to destroy Israel. What is the motivation? What is the reason? Seeing they are 1,000 miles away, they have no territorial issues, they are not Arabs, they don't have a land for peace issues. What is it they have against Israel? That is the issue that I want to show you so that you will have a biblical understanding of the issues concerning the time and season we are living in and what are the players, because now we are talking about the principalities and the powers 
of darkness that are at work in our world today. A cosmic conflict that does not make sense to anyone. Because how then do you explain a people so far away, patients, with no territorial issues, no historical issues? What is it that's driving the mullahs in Tehran? We will look at that. That will, that will give you a foundation and understanding. Because my, the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. So we need to know so that we can pray intelligently and understand how that's going to impact our world, impact our lives, impact our nation. Because prophecy will be fulfilled and everyone will be impacted by it. So this conflict will impact the whole world. It's bigger than Tehran and bigger than Israel. Because the reasons behind it are what you need to know. Because these are the reasons that will affect every person on the face of the earth. What are the reasons why Iran wants to fight Israel? Why they are creating this nuclear bomb to wipe out the Jewish people? What is the issue? Can we know the issue? Yes. Because this is the work of the Prince of Persia, the principality, the demonic principality, influencing their government, their people, driving them to destroy the modern state of Israel. Because the devil hates Israel. The dragon hates the woman that gave birth to the man child Jesus Christ, Revelation chapter 12. This is the conflict. It's a biblical conflict. It's a prophetic conflict. It's a prophetic conflict in the sense that God has already told us it's going to happen, and this is the time it's happening. Now, why are they trying to get this bomb now, quickly? Because they want to accelerate. They want to accelerate the destruction of the world and the coming of their Messiah. They want to, to usher in the advent of the 12th Imam. This is their eschatological expectation. This is their prophetic fulfillment. They are engaged in a prophetic war to fulfill prophetic predictions that is in their teaching and they are being driven not by reason, they are being driven by a theological in interpretation of their own scriptures which says Israel must be destroyed. That's why they're trying to accelerate because when this war takes place, they believe that their Messiah, the 12th Imam, the Mahadi, will be revealed. Mahadi was here. He disappeared at the age of five in 800. In 74 AD, he is the last descendant of Muhammad. At the age of five, he disappeared. And they say he will appear again when there is destruction of Israel, when there is destruction around the world, that this 12th Imam will be manifested on the earth. That's what drives them. That's why they cannot stop, will not stop, because they want to fulfill their eschatology. That is to hasten the coming of the Mahari. A Mahari will subdue the whole world. He is the, he is the one they've been waiting for, and they believe now we're in the days. We're in the time of his coming. And that's why they're accelerating their conflict that began in 1980. They are intensifying trying to get this bomb made quickly so they, they, they are Mahari, the 12th Imam, may be revealed, the hidden one, may be revealed. And when he comes, they say you'll be wearing the ring of King Solomon and he will have the staff of Moses. And when he comes, Jesus will be his deputy. And when he comes, he will destroy almost eight, 60 to 80% of the world 
trying to subject them or bring them into subjection to Shiite Islam. It is the triumph of Shiite Islam through the Mahdi. So they say Mahdi, this 12th Imam that disappeared in 874, he is now coming back and they are ready for him and they must create global chaos to prepare for him. He is the man that is driving them, this spirit of the Prince of Persia is driving them to destruction, uh, to destroying nations because they feel that his time has come. Ahmadinejad said he knows he's alive. the 12th Imam is coming, he's, he's spoken to him. So there is an acceleration to bring this destruction on Israel and the nations. This is not limited to Israel. The big Satan is America, not only America, Western Europe, because the Mahdi must subject all the earth. Every nation must be subjected to the 12th Imam. So they believe that the 12th Imam is about to rule the world from Jerusalem. And they believe that he's going to rule the world for seven years. And that he will fight the one-eyed Antichrist and defeat the one-eyed Antichrist. It's amazing. Seven years, the one-eyed Antichrist the battle, so the, this battle is bigger. It's a cosmic battle. It is the battle that will lead to the battle of Armageddon because Iran will bring Gog, the prince of Russia. Iran will bring the, the kings of the east. They will all join. So this is just the beginning. This war, Israel is going to win, but Persia is going to be part of the hook that will bring Gog into the battle of Ezekiel 38 and 39. So this is the beginning of the final confrontation between the prince of Greece and the prince of Persia, which began in, 531, in 331 with Alexander the Great. Now, once more, we're going to see this conflict is bigger than nations. It is cosmic. It is the principality rulers of darkness, kingdoms that are invisible to your eye and my eye, influencing political trajectory, influencing the pathways, the political pathways, the economic pathways, controlling the world. This is a satanic influence on the earth. These principalities, these rulers of darkness, influencing the direction of nations, the thinking of nations, manipulating them to control this whole world, and that's what's happening. The, the Mahari is nothing but the devil. It is the devil's plan to deceive the people of God, to drive the people of God to destruction because when the devil comes, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Now we see the prince of Persia rising up again. And the scripture tells us that the prince of Greece will come and the prince of Persia will be defeated. Now hear me. This is where we are, 2023. The prince of Greece will come to the aid of Israel. And the prince of Persia will be defeated. And the prince of Persia will afflict tremendous pain on Israel, on Tel Aviv, whether it's through the Hezbollah, whether it's a direct attack, they are going to afflict tremendous casualties and pain on Israel. The Lord showed me, we need to pray. We need to stand in, the, in that place of intercession. I'm talking of revelational intercession to defeat the powers of darkness that are at work against Israel and against the nations of the world because the, 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 the Mahari wants to control the world. And the Mahari says to the people of Iran, they are the people to fight for him, 
to prepare the way for him to cause total chaos and destroy the whole world in order for him to rule the world. We know who that is. He said to rule for seven years. We know who that is. And we know that God will not allow the prince of Persia to take over because the prince of Greece must be ruler when Jesus came first time and when Jesus comes the second time. Daniel chapter 9 verse 26 says the prince will come. The, the people of the prince will come and destroy the city and the sanctuary that is in AD 70 that Titus came, destroyed Jerusalem, and now the prince is coming, that is the Antichrist, who is going to come to the aid of Israel, defend Israel, make a peace treaty with Israel to protect them, bring peacekeeping forces to Israel, defend Israel against the, the, the Persian threat. And the 19, sorry, and the 83, some 83 war that's coming. That means all the haters of Israel are going to join the Iranian conflict with Israel. They're going to stand with Israel. Those who love Israel, they're going to pray for Israel. And those who hate Israel are going to stand with the haters of Israel. So we are now moving towards the final confrontation, biblical confrontation, prophetic confrontation, that is marked for this time to signal the end of time. The rising up of the prince of Persia and the prince of Greece coming again to the side of Israel to defend Israel, to stand with Israel, and to create a false agreement with Israel. And that's how this thing is going to work out. It's going to work out through the conflict. Israel being forced to seek help, and the help will come from the prince of Greece so that scriptures may be fulfilled. Because it says in Daniel chapter 9, 25, that the, the people of the prince came. That's in AD 70. The people of the prince came, destroyed the city and the sanctuary. That was Titus. And the prince is the Antichrist. So we know that in the defense of Israel, it to protect Israel will be the peacekeeping forces from the West, and they will be an Antichrist orchestrating these things, according to the scriptures. We are living in a prophetic time, in a very serious time. And these are the things that make the Bible real. Real events happening in our real world. Political powers raised up by the powers of darkness to confront, to confront the people of God and to cause the end of the world. And it's all predicted. What happened before was a paradigm. It was a blueprint. Now we are in the fulfillment of the Prince of Persia being pushed away, not being able to destroy Israel. Their vision to destroy Israel, their eschatological vision to destroy Israel, their prophetic vision to, pro to destroy Israel will not be realized, will not be fulfilled. Yes, they will afflict pain on Israel, but Israel will stand, Israel will survive, and Israel will be there when Jesus comes back. Because we, the people of God, will stand with them in prayer. Our God will watch over them. He that keepeth Israel will, will neither sleep nor slumber. He is going to defend them. He brought them back. You keep them until he comes back. They will be a victorious Israel at the end of this conflict. They will come back again in the battle of Armageddon, Ezekiel 38 and 39, and they will overwhelm Israel, and the Lord himself will defend Israel. He will come to defend the territorial integrity of the land of Israel. He will come as the true Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ, is coming back to defend Israel because the scripture tells us this war is in scripture, prophesied, predicted, Jeremiah chapter 4, for, Je Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 4 to 5, tells us exactly what's happening right now. This is the fulfillment of Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 4 and 5. We are watching prophecy being fulfilled in our very eyes. They will fall down slain in Babylon, that is Persia, fatally wounded in the streets for Israel and Judah have not been forsaken. Hear me. Why is Israel going to prevail? Because of the Western help? No. Because of God's help. Yes, Western powers will come and defend them. Because God will bring the Prince of Persia. Because God said it. And he's going to do it. But the real reason is given here. For Israel and Judah 
If not been for second, replacement theology is wrong. The Shiite eschatology is wrong. The false beliefs that Israel is debauched, that they, the Zionists are globalists, they, they are bankers, they are, they are manipulating the world, and they are evil, and God hates them. The answer is God loves the children of Israel. He loves the Jewish people. He is with the Jewish people. And he says it right here. Don't think that God's going to allow this to happen because he hates the Jewish people. He says, for Israel had, and Judah have not been forsaken. What is that? God has not forsaken his people. He loves Israel. He's on the side of Israel. God loves Israel right now. In spite of what's going on, because it's going to tell us right here. For a second, by their God, the Lord Almighty. Now listen to this. Though, 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 that word though, listen to it. Though the land is full of guilt. Though Israel is full of guilt. The synagogue of Satan and full of guilt. Listen to what God says. Before, before the Holy One of Israel. But I'm going to defend them in spite of the fact that they're full of guilt and shame. I'm on their side. I love Israel. It's unconditional commitment. Unconditional covenant. I am the Holy One of Israel. Will always be the Holy One of Israel. He will defend them. He will fight for them. He is on their side. He brought them back. He will keep them in the land. He is on their side. Though there is a lot of sin in Israel, though there is rebellion in Israel, God is with them. He loves them. He will forgive them. He will cleanse them. He will defend them because he loves them. That's the good news. It's by grace. As we in the church have been forgiven by grace, Israel will be forgiven by grace, grace upon grace. Mercy will triumph over judgment. I want to close by this scripture. To show how much God cares for Israel. That in spite of this cosmic conflict from the Prince of Persia, stirring up the Persians to go to war with Israel, to try to destroy Israel, that God is going to intervene and he's going to use the Prince of Greece to come on their side. The American, the, the NATO forces, they're all going to go to the side of Israel. They're going to defend Israel. God said it. That settles the matter. It's divine. It's plain. It's God's plan that is being fulfilled. Nothing is happening outside the prophetic purposes of God. In the book of, uh, of Jeremiah, again, 51, verse 10 to 11, the Lord has vindicated us. Who is going to vindicate them? The Lord. Come, let us tell in Zion. They will be vindicated. Israel will be vindicated. I said Israel is going to be vindicated by the almighty God. It's time to pray for Israel. It's time to stand with Israel. Because Israel is going to be vindicated. Because he brought them back to the land. And he is with them. He will cleanse them. He will forgive them. In the land of Israel. He will keep his children. He says the Lord has vindicated us. Come let us tell in Zion. What the Lord our God has done. The victory over the Prince of Persia. God's going to do it. God is going to move. This is the end of the conflict between Israel and Iran. The vindication of the people of God. The protection of the people of God. Yes, I said God showed me that Tel Aviv is going to come under attack. I don't know whether it's through the Isabella or whatever it is. I don't need to know that. But I didn't do know one thing. That there will be major casualties in Tel Aviv. And that we can, we can pray and stand on the gate and put a covering over, over the city of Tel Aviv. So that God Almighty, the only one of Israel, who protect Israel. Not only Jerusalem, but protect Tel Aviv. Because he is the one that brought back the people to the land. He loves his people. He brought them back. That is why we can join them in prayer and in a session. And this is what he says to Iran. Sharpen the arrows. Take up the shields. The Lord has stirred up the kings of the Medes. That is the Persians. God has stirred them up. 
He has allowed the prince of Persia to stir them up because his purpose is to destroy Persia. What is the purpose of this? God is setting up Persia to destroy Persia. God said it, and that's what's going to happen. God says he has stirred them up, and he wants to, the purpose is to destroy Persia. The Lord will take vengeance vengeance for the temple because their attempt is to fight Israel to stop Israel from building the third temple that's why they're trying this they're trying to stir up the Hezbollah they're trying to stir up the Palestinians they're trying to bring tension and bring devastation and destruction and destroy all the children of Israel wipe them out in a nuclear holocaust that there'll be no Jew so there'll be no temple there will be a temple on Temple Mount God said it and I declare it right now, there will be a temple on Temple Mount. And Persia, Iran, will be judged for trying to intervene, intervene and interrupt what God's plan is for Israel. She will return to Israel. She will build the third temple. God said it. It's going to happen in spite of the prince of Persia seeking to destroy the children of Israel before the temple is built. That's why we, the people of God, will stand with Israel, pray with Israel, and know that God's going to deliver them because he is the Holy One of Israel. That is why I call upon you from the nations to fast and pray for Israel, to know that this conflict that's coming between Israel and Iran is in the scripture and that we know the end of that conflict, they're going to be defeated and we know that they will come back in the battle of Armageddon with Russia and China and all the, the haters of Israel, they'll come against them and once again God will deliver Israel. He is the Holy One of Israel. We, we have been called from the nations of the world to become part of Israel, the one new man, Jew and Gentile, coming together to worship the Holy One of Israel. We who know the plan and purpose of God, that God has called among the nations. He said, I'll call for intercessors that will not rest. Isaiah 62, Verse 5, I'll call for intercessors from among the nations who will not rest until I make Jerusalem a praise on the earth. Men and women around the world being raised up by God at this time to be intercessors, to stand in the gate on behalf of Israel. Do not rest. You who mention the name of the Lord, do not rest. You are to pray until God remembers this covenant and God intervenes on behalf of his people because of his faithfulness to his covenant. You who know the Lord, it is time to stand with Israel, to pray for Israel, to speak for Israel, to fight for Israel because God who chose them is with them. He says, I am with them in spite of the guilt and the shame that they have. I am with them. I will forgive them. I will cleanse them. I will restore them. God made the covenant. He will keep his covenant. And we who are children of the living God among the nations, we stand with Israel. We pray with Israel. And we celebrate together the victory that's coming because God is about to be vindicated. His name is about to be glorified on the earth because he's going to have a victory come and the prince of Greece is going to come to that, that side. He's going to fight for them, stand with them, and Iran is going to be defeated. And this plan of the 12th Im Imam, this 12th Ma Mahadi, is not going to happen. It's not going to be fulfilled because it's not biblical prophecy. Only biblical prophecy, it is written, is going to be fulfilled. Only that which is in Scripture, the Holy Scriptures, is only the only thing that's going to be fulfilled. All these vain imaginations, falsehoods, doctrines of demons and devils will not be fulfilled. Only it is written will be fulfilled. That's why we know that there will be no 12th Imam. There will not be the fulfillment of that false prophecy. There's only one prophecy that we fulfilled. That is, it is written in scriptures. I invite you to break away from playing religion to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. A personal relationship with Jesus Christ. An intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Because he is the hope of this hour. He is the future that you're looking for. 
Is the security that you're looking for? Is the hiding place that you're looking for? There is no other hiding place. Only under the shadow of the Almighty. There is a future for the people of God. Those who seek Him with all their heart, with all their mind. Those who repent of all their sins and ask for forgiveness and cleansing by the blood of Jesus. I'm talking about the remnant that God is raising upon the earth. Men and women who know that what God said in His word is true. Men and women who are going to come out of her and be separate and follow God with all their heart, with all their strength. This is the hour of the overcomers. This is the hour of the heroes of faith. Men and women recklessly abandoned to the Lord with a single vision and a single purpose to serve the Lord with gladness and to watch all the world events through biblical prophecy, through the eyes of it is written, to understand the times and seasons we are living in, through it is written. I'm talking about a people whose time has come. The spirit of Elijah is being poured again. I'm talking about men and women full of the anointing, anointed. I'm talking about a prophetic company being raised on the earth. The spirit of Elijah coming upon them. I'm talking of a mighty people that the devil will not be able to defeat. There will be a militant church on the earth. There will be a victorious church on the earth. I'm talking about a church without spot, without wrinkle. I'm talking about a church that will defeat the powers of darkness, the prince of Greece and the prince of Persia. All the principalities of, of darkness will be defeated and crushed. The devil is under our feet already. We've overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, because we love not our lives unto death. Greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. We have overcome him. We have overcome him. We have already overcome him. We do the done. We have already overcome him. By the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. Because we love not our lives unto death. Child of the Most High God. You say, but I don't feel that way. I feel compromised. I feel anxious. Yes, you're showing us how this is predicted. And we know the end of this war between Israel and Iran that Israel will win. Israel will not be destroyed. Thank you for showing us that. But you know what? It's about my own life. My own life is compromised. I, I need to know God. I need to walk with God. I need to abide in Christ. I need to be conformed to his image. I want to be part of the remnant. The spirit, of, or the spirit of Elijah will fill me and guide me. I want, I, want, I want everything that Elijah had. And I love, I just love the Lord. And I want to have a double portion of the anointing. Can you help me? Yes, my answer is yes. There is a future for you. There is a place for you in the divine economy. There is victory for you in Christ Jesus. There is a breakthrough for you in Christ Jesus. Yes, there is healing for you in Christ Jesus. The best of your years are before you in Christ Jesus. According to your faith, it will be done unto you. Now I, I invite you to come back to the foot of the cross and ask God to cleanse you and ask God to forgive you. And ask the Holy Spirit to come upon you. That you may rise and shine. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Don't let yesterday's problems hold you back. The failures of yesterday. The disappointments of yesterday. Don't let them hold you back. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is victory in the name of Jesus. There is a breakthrough for you in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all sin and all unrighteousness. I want you to confess to the Lord all the shame and the guilt and the condemnation, the alienation that you feel the inadequacy that you feel, the despair that you feel, 
I want you to confess that to the Lord right now. And I want to pray for you. That the Lord will touch you again. Anoint you again. Raise you up again. That you may be able to walk in the victory that's yours in Christ Jesus. That you may walk in the power that's yours in Christ Jesus. That you may fulfill the destiny that God has prepared for you. <laughs> that you may be what God has called you to be in these last days. If you're ready, I'm, I'm ready. You confess your sins, you rededicate your life, and I'll pray a blessing upon you. Father God, I pray for my brothers and sisters. They're confessing their sins to you. They're asking you to forgive them. They're asking you to fill them with your Holy Spirit. They're asking for strength that comes from you to lead them one day at a time, one step at a time, one victory at a time. They're asking you to take them one day, one step, every day, that they will know that this is the will of God. Thank you, Lord, that you are the God of the now. You are ever-present help in time of need. You are our present help right now. Forgive my brothers. Cleanse my sisters. Wash the remnant with your blood. Restore the remnant. Fill the remnant with your power. Give them a bold, boldness to give a testimony of what you've done for them. Not to be ashamed of you, but to stand up and speak out, Father. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God has restored you. It's a new day. You run with God. You're called for such a time as this. You have a destiny for such a time as this. Don't let the devil steal your destiny. Some of you have never received Jesus Christ as Savior. He says, I don't know Jesus. I want to be born again. Born into the kingdom of God. Born to live with God for all eternity. What can I do? Pray after me. Father God, I thank you for Jesus who came to die for me. Now, Father God, I ask your son Jesus to come into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. I ask you, Father, to write my name in the book of life. But when I die, I'll spend an eternity with you. I ask you now to give me the power to be called your child as you promised in your word. From this day forth, help me to walk with you, to save you, to be the person that you want me to be. I thank you for saving me, for writing my name in the book of life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now for all of you, wherever you are, whoever you are, I'm going to put a blessing upon you. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and shine upon you and be gracious towards you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.